What's up, sons? It's Blindrod with Simatech once again, and while I've seen people talk about improving your game performance on the Ryzen 5 2400G and general tips and tricks, I haven't seen a dedicated overclocking video. So today, we're going to go over how to overclock the Ryzen 5 2400G. Of course, I am not a know-it-all, and I can always be corrected and learn new things, so let me know in the comment section below if you have any ideas. Don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button if you're interested in more content like this stick around. Welcome back. So the test system is actually not something that you're going to be seeing on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm going to be approaching this topic from the idea that you have the stock cooler currently on it. And in that case, you're going to have to worry about thermals more than ever. This particular system is actually hardline liquid cooled and you can check out that build up here in the corner. It has the Ryzen 5 2400G and it has the G-Skill Flare X 3200 megahertz memory and it is a dual channel kit. So with all of that aside, let's talk about the top three things of course first that you're going to want to go ahead and overclock. We're going to be looking at memory overclock as well as CPU overclock and the GPU portion of the APU. These are in order of importance. So the first thing, and this is very important that you take this into consideration when overclocking a Ryzen 5 2400G is to overclock the memory. Both the APU as well as the CPU scale very, very well with higher memory clocks. So when we're talking about memory, we're talking about the system memory because keep in mind there's none built in on the chip so it shares it with the system. So when overclocking, the first step is to overclock your memory as far as it will go. Keeping in mind that everything you overclock will directly affect everything else and how well it overclocks, the number of importance is, is very key here. So starting with memory overclock. The second portion that we'll move on to is the GPU portion of the APU and overclocking that. The reason we're gonna overclock the GPU instead of the CPU first is because this is where the temperature start getting higher and higher on the processor and because the bottleneck is going to be the GPU in this processor in particular you're going to want to get that overclock as high as possible first and then move on to the CPU. So finally we're going to talk about how to overclock the CPU itself and the importance of how high you want to really see it especially in this particular case when we're talking about an APU. That aside, let's hop in how to do it and I'll see you back in a sec. Okay, so to get things started, we're just gonna go ahead and open a CPU-Z so that you guys can currently see what our CPU-Z is at and what components we have in the system. Taking a look here, you'll see that we have the AMD Ryzen 5 2400G. It is the Raven Ridge on socket AM4. You can see our core clock is bouncing. I believe I left this at stock. We'll talk about why, of course, here in a second. And our core voltage is nice and low. Moving over to the memory, you'll see that I haven't applied a memory overclock yet, and that's what we're gonna go over right now. So closing that out, we're gonna just go ahead and restart the system and we're gonna get into the BIOS for the memory in particular. So when you're doing this, most motherboards are gonna be something like delete or F2. So right on post, you wanna be tapping delete or F2. Okay, so unfortunately we don't have the Elgato working for the screen cap of the BIOS. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So we're doing the old fashioned point the camera at the screen method here and the first thing we're going to take a look at is going to be the overclock tweaker coming into here you can have multiple options this is going to be for ASRock every motherboard manufacturer is going to be a little bit different if we need to go over each one individually please let me know in the comment section below but you're going to be looking for something called XMP settings and you're going to want to basically get the XMP profile to start out with this is just because it's going to be the easiest way to go ahead and get the best performance out of your memory without tweaking it any further. However, if you're under 2900 megahertz, which is basically kind of the peak performance for Ryzen at this point, you're gonna wanna try to push it a little bit further. So to do that, with the XMP profile selected, you can actually adjust the speed here in the profile and bump it up a little bit more as you go through it. Now, when you do this, you're gonna actually probably cause some instabilities at some point, and you might have to go ahead and reboot 
and actually pull the battery or reset your CMOS. I'll cover that in another video. Of course, basically the first thing you're going to want to do is just try to reboot it. Most of the time it will come back. Never go up more than one setting as you're testing this and make sure it posts and you should be good to go. Now talking about the advanced boot training, we're going to be skipping over that. The next thing you're going to want to look at is the timing configuration. Let's say you're very close to being stable at one or two steps above, but it does introduce some problems. You're going to want to change your timing to a looser timing. So a looser timing would be a higher number. In this case, we would go to 15 if we wanted to loosen our timings up. So we would basically go 15, 15, and so on and so forth. Now, keeping in mind that I'll probably have to go into this in a little bit more depth later on. So I suggest leaving timings alone. Of course, you can look all of these up and they are pretty much standard across the board. But for basic principles, I would just try going up one at a time. If you wanted to get into even crazier stuff, you can come down here and adjust your RAM voltage as well. Uh, once again, I don't quite recommend doing that. That's something we would have to do in a more in-depth video. But for now, what you need to keep track of is always making sure that your XMP profile is enabled. And if you're below 2933 on your memory overclock to try to get as close to that as possible. So if you are able to just come in here and bump up to 2800, and reboot and see if it will apply. So now that we have that all configured, we're just gonna go to the exit menu and click save changes and exit. Okay, so to confirm that you've actually achieved a memory overclock, you can always open your CPU-Z and then click memory. I also suggest using some sort of stability test like IDA64 or of course Prime95 to ensure that it's okay before moving on to the next step. Links will be in the description below. So once we've overclocked the memory, it's time to start overclocking the GPU portion of the APU. Unfortunately, right now, it is not supported in MSI Afterburner and so on, and the best way to overclock it is going to be an application called Ryzen Master. You can do a quick Google search of Ryzen Master and it should come up. If you just type it into Google, it'll be the first one that comes up and I'll put a link in the description below for this as well. And you can download and install it right here. Once it's installed, you can just type in to your search or click the desktop icon to get it running. You'll have a warning, of course, and click OK. And then once you're in here, you're gonna be able to start overclocking your CPU as well as your GPU. Right now we're talking about the GPU, so let's go to Profile 1. Under Profile 1, you'll notice that we have our APU graphics speed, our APU graphics voltage, our memory, and our SOC voltage. The primary ones we're gonna be taking a look at at this point is going to be your graphics speed and your GPU voltage. We can even turn this off and let that be controlled by the rest of the system. This is the primary one that we're going to be taking a look at and you're just want to, going to want to bring it up as high as you can. It starts off around 1200 and you can go up from there. I have no problem getting this over 1500 even on the stock cooler and this is a good starting point for people to take a look at would be at about 1500 as well as about 1.2 on the voltage. Now I can go much higher than this because we are underwater, but I wanted you guys to see what would be considered a basic overclock. But never start at the high points that you see online, and I definitely suggest starting around 1300 and moving up from there with the voltage at 1.1, and then as it fails, bumping up a little bit more in the voltage, and then backing it off once you've found a good spot. Keep in mind here, if you see people that are getting good overclocks on their CPU and not getting good overclocks on their GPU portion of the APU, that this is primarily due to the fact that they probably overclock the CPU first and there's too much heat for the APU to get a good overclock. So always perform the overclock on the GPU portion of the APU before moving on to the CPU. So I'm gonna leave this here as a primary example of what you can achieve on stock. And then you'll want to click the apply. 
And then you'll also probably want to go ahead and save it to your profile. And then to verify that you're running it correctly, I would definitely recommend running a stability test that focuses on graphics. For example, we have 3D Mark here that we could run. We also have some other games and titles. We actually don't have 3D Mark installed, funny enough. Uh, I definitely recommend 3D Mark if you have it or just pick up one of your games. The next thing you're going to want to grab so you can monitor and make sure that the GPU is being overclocked is going to be MSI Afterburner. Once again, if you open up a browser and head to Google and search for MSI Afterburner, it should be pretty easy to pick up. You can see here it's the first selection and I'll leave a link to it in the description below as well. Once you have it downloaded and installed, make sure that during the install process you actually install Riva Tuner Statistics and then run the application. Like I said before, it doesn't really have an actual overclock that you're able to really apply here. Uh, what we can see is that our GPU clock is at 1500 like we applied it and our memory clock is at 1600 so if you double that that's 3200 megahertz that's our actual system memory that it's using there. The next thing you want to do is open the profile for your Riva tuner statistics and just ensure that you have on screen display so selected. Go back to your MSI afterburner click the settings button click on over to monitoring and anything you want to show in game, you will just want to highlight. So for example, if we wanted GPU temperature, we would highlight it and click show in on screen display. Under properties, if it shows in OSD, that means you'll be able to see it in game. Of course, some games aren't compatible with this overlay, but most are in my experience. Once you're done with that, you can run a game and just make sure that your overclock is applied. I'd recommend playing on it for a while to make sure that it's going to be stable. And once you've determined that it's stable, I recommend moving on to the CPU portion of your overclock. So moving on to the CPU portion of your overclock, you can either continue to use Ryzen Master or you can go into the BIOS. Today we're going to talk about the Ryzen Master application as you will probably already have this set as your profile and if everything fails and it shuts down when this comes back up it shouldn't have applied the speed and it's just a little bit easier without having to reset the CMOS battery or reset the BIOS and we'll go over that like I said in another video so hit subscribe if you're interested in knowing how to recover. Now talking about the overclock this is an unreasonable overclock underwater. 4 gigahertz is not something you want to be aiming for you want to also make sure that you enable voltage control in your Ryzen Master application. And I would not recommend really in the case of the APU going above 1.3. Even 1.35 is going to introduce too much heat on the stock cooler. And I wouldn't recommend, like I said, going above 1.3. In this case, the most I've really seen anybody achieve if they've already overclock this in the proper order and overclock their APU or the GPU portion of the APU first. The highest I've seen anybody achieve was about 3.8 gigahertz. Your mileage of course will vary. The way you want to start this out though is starting at 3.6 and 1.3 volts and bumping up to 5 every chance you get until you introduce some sort of instability uh, when you're running some sort of stability test like IDA64. So if you notice instability, I recommend backing it off too and leaving that as your final setting. Some people will back it off just one click, but I've noticed that that won't quite pass some of the more strenuous activities that could be introduced. So this is a very basic overview of how to overclock the APU. If you have any questions, leave it down below. We have a lot more to cover, so if you're interested in more coverage on this, definitely go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Alrighty, so that covers how to overclock your Ryzen 5 2400G. The 2200G should be quite similar, of course, just different numbers. You can look at different benchmarks and what other people are achieving on this, keeping a couple things in mind. First of all, the biggest thing is going to be anything you overclock on your APU system is going to directly affect 
the amount you can overclock the other portion of it. So however high you're able to overclock your memory is going to affect how high you can then overclock your GPU and your CPU. So keeping all of that in mind, like I stated before, the number one thing that you want to make sure that you overclock is going to be the memory as it affects both the CPU and the GPU portions. Next, moving on to, of course, the GPU. As the GPU is the primary bottleneck in the APU format, that's gonna be the next one you want to overclock. And then once you've confirmed that that's stable, finally moving on to the CPU and overclocking that is about as far as you can. On the stock cooler, these basic settings will most likely get you above 1500 megahertz on the GPU portion and get you around 3.7 to 3.8 gigahertz on the CPU. Keeping in mind that if you actually reverse that and did the CPU portion first, it's pretty common to get the 3.9 gigahertz. However, when you do that, you introduce so much heat that your GPU portion will start failing around 1300 megahertz on the core clock. Now, don't worry about actually overclocking the memory for the GPU because if you check that and adjust those memories, it's going to, well, for the most part, be lower than it would be if you just left it on what was overclocked in the BIOS for your XMP profile on the memory. Now, I know I'm not the best at these tutorials, so I do have a Discord uh, link in the description for you to come on by and ask me questions. I can type it out and, of course, help you out a little bit better there. And as well as in the comment section, I'll do my best to guide you through whatever you need. Once we get into some more granular detail, I will let you guys know by tweeting it at Son of a Tech. And if you follow me over there, we'll have some more stuff like recovering from a bad overclock and so on and so forth. I feel like this is a very basic thing that we need to get out of the way. And the idea of what order you should be overclocking your Ryzen 5 2400G in because that is the biggest thing that a lot of people are missing when I watch any videos regarding the Ryzen 5 2400G or 2200G Ryzen 3. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next Tuesday.